Welcome to section 9.4 day two, factoring to solve quadratic equations. Today's objective is to solve quadratic equations by using factoring. In 9.3 we did graphing. In 9.4 day one we did the square root property. And here's our another method, which is by factoring. And this is why we did all that factoring back in chapter eight. Here it says, doing some warm up here, find the product of x plus three and x minus four. And you should know how to do this. We did this back in section 8.3, take x plus 3 times x minus 4. You do the FOIL or distribution, you get x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 12. And when you simplify it, you get x squared minus x minus 12. So you should be able to do this. And we have 2x minus 1 and x plus 5. We do the same thing, make sure you distribute completely and combine like terms when you're done. You get 2x squared, 2x times 5 is 10x. Uh, negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. And this becomes 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. And that is our product. So today we're going to use this, here we have factors we multiply together. Now we're going to do this, we're going to solve by factoring using a nice little uh, property we have. All right, so here we have factor the following. This is what we did, like, like I said, back in chapter 8. We did a bunch of it, sections 9 and sections 8.5, 8.6, and 8.7. For the first one, we can do it the easy way because our leading coefficient is 1. We look at what multiplies the 4, that adds to negative 5. And the factors of 4 that will add to negative 5 are negative 1 and negative 4. So our factors are just m minus 1, m minus 4. And that's what we did in 8.6 day 1. For the next one, we have a leading coefficient that's not 1. So we'll use the AC split method. We multiply the A and the C together, we get 36. All right, from there, we are going to... Find the factors of 36 that add to negative 15. Since 36 is positive and the middle term is negative, we have two negative factors. And our factors in this case are negative 3 and negative 12. We are going to split our middle term into negative 12z and uh, negative 3z. Then we are going to group like we did from section 8.5. We group plus sign in between, find the GCF of each group. The first group's GCF is 2z, leaves behind z minus 6. The second's group, we take out a negative because our leading coefficient is negative. We take out a negative 3, leaving behind z minus 6. And so our factored form is 2z minus 3. Because z minus 6 says match, this works. As a reminder, what we did last chapter, when we had a leading coefficient of 1, we just find the factors of the last that add to the middle. When we have a leading coefficient of not 1, we do the AC split method. So there was a little bit of review from the last couple slides because we need to use this today. So here is what we have that's new today, the zero product property. For any real numbers A and B, if A times B equals 0, then the A has to be zero, the B has to be zero, or they can both be zero. But one of those three things must happen. If you set something like this equal to zero, the first factor, the second factor to be zero, or they both have to be. So if we have x plus three in parentheses and x plus two is our factors, and we set it equal to zero, remember we had that as equals to y, and we, but we make the y zero, we can set either factor or both factors equal to zero and solve. So we set x plus 3 equal to 0 and x plus 2 equal to 0. And when you solve them, you subtract 3 and you subtract 2, and you find your solutions are at negative 3 and negative 2. What this means is that if you plotted these on a graph, you'd have the points negative 3, 0, and negative 2, 0. And if you would graph this, it would cross, this parabola would cross the x-axis at x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2. So what we're finding is by doing this factoring, instead of our factors equal to zero, we're finding the solutions. We are finding the zeros. 
We're finding where this thing, the graph, would cross the x-axis. This is one of our other methods to solve quadratics. So it asks here on the bottom, it says, what are the solutions of x plus 1 times x minus 5 equals 0? We set these two factors because our y here, are, we've set this equal to 0. If either of our factors is 0, the whole thing is 0. So we set it up. x plus 1, what happens if x plus 1 equals 0? What happens when x minus 5 is 0? And to solve you move, we get x is negative 1. You add 5, and x is 5. Those are our two solutions. Our roots, our zeros, um, this is where the graph would cross the x-axis. But now we can solve like we did yesterday. Without having to do a graph, we can solve by using algebra. So here it says solve the following quadratic equations by factoring. Exactly what we're going to do. We're going to factor it. And... See what our solutions are. For our top one, we have a leading coefficient of 1. So all we have to do is find out what multiplies to negative 20 that adds to a positive 1, which is our coefficient of our middle term. And since we have a negative 20 and a positive 1p in the middle, we know that one of our factors is positive and one's negative. Well, the factors of negative 20 that will add to positive 1 are 5 and negative 4. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. 5 minus 4 is 1. So we just break it up. So we have p plus 5. And p minus 4 equals 0. And now if either one of our parentheses goes to 0, the entire left side goes to 0. So we set p plus 5 equal to 0. We set p minus 4 equal to 0. And we solve. And some of you guys are already going to start seeing a pattern when we do this. You're going to see that we get the opposite signs. So our solutions for our top one are negative 5 and 4. All right, for the bottom one, we have 4x squared minus 21x minus 18 equals 0. For this one, we need to use the AC split. Another thing, make sure you're always looking for a GCF. On this slide, neither of these has a GCF. But always look for those two because you can sometimes pull a GCF out which will make your job easier. All right, so we have to take the a times the c. 4 times negative 18 is negative 72. We need factors of negative 72. That will add up to negative 21. And if you need to do this again, the negative 72 means we have to have a positive and a negative factor. Well, we know our factors will be 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24. And if... We have a negative 24 and a positive 3, we will get to negative 21. So we have 4x squared minus 24x plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. We group like we did last chapter. And then we pull out a 4x and we get x minus 6. We pull out a 3. We get x minus 6. And then we have the x minus 6 is a degree, so we have x minus 6. And we have 4x plus 3 equals 0. And again, since we have two factors equal to 0 on the right side there, if either one of the factors on the left side equals 0, then the whole left side becomes 0. So we set it up. x minus 6 is 0. 4x plus 3 is 0, and we solve. Add 6 for the first one, you get x is 6. Second one, you have to subtract 3 first. So you get 4x equals negative 3, divide by 4, and you'll find that x is negative 3 fourths. So our two solutions are x equals 6, and x is negative 3 fourths. So this is solving by factoring. We factor them. We set each factor equal to 0. Solve for our variables. When we do this, we will set any factor that has a variable in it equal to 0. If we were able to factor out a GCF of just a number like 3, well, the 3 doesn't have a variable in it, so we wouldn't set that equal to 0. Just factors that have variables in them get set equal to 0. So one of those things you have to make sure whenever we're working with quadratics at this point 
is we need to make sure we put them in standard form. When we factor, when we do the square root property, when we graph them, we need to make sure we are in standard form. So to do this, we need to get everything on the left side for this one. So we're going to subtract 21 from both sides. And we get b squared minus 4b minus 21 equals 0. We have a leading coefficient of 1. So what multiplies the negative 21 that adds the negative 4? The factors are a negative 7 and a positive 3. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. We set each factor equal to 0. So we have b minus 7 equals 0 and b plus 3 equals 0. And we solve both. First when we add 7, the second when we subtract 3. So we get b is 7 and b is negative 3. Those are our two solutions. All right, so we have down below it says solve by factoring. This one we do have to factor. There's another way to solve it from the other day, but it says to factor, so we will factor. We want to get the 25 over with the x squared term. And we get 4x squared minus 25 equals 0. Now this goes back to one of our special cases. This is a difference of squares. Now we did this back in section 8.7. The per We have a squared term minus a squared term. So let's take the square root of the first. We take the square root of the last. We have two factors. One's positive in the middle and one's a negative. That's the shortcut. If you recall it, it's going to save you time. So 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5 are our two factors. And so we set them equal to 0. So we have 2x plus 5 is 0. We have 2x minus 5 is 0. And we solve both. We get 2x is negative 5. We divide by 2. And we get x is negative 5 halves. We add 5 for the second one. We get 2x is 5. Divide by 2 and get that x is 5 halves. So we have two solutions, negative 5 halves and 5 halves. All right, that is all for section 9.4, day 2. Uh, like I said earlier, when you're doing factoring, any factors that have a variable in them are what we set equal to 0. Um, if there is a factor that just has a number, like 3 times, and then in parentheses, 2x plus 5, the 3 is not set equal to 0. Just factors that have variables in them get set equal to 0. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.